Welcome to our lecture online. We're now going to solve the same problem for the same variable, the final angular velocity, but we're going to do it graphically because it turns out sometimes the graphical method is a pretty handy method. So what we're going to do is start off with a omega versus t graph, an angular velocity versus time graph. So on the vertical axis we get, um, well, we get omega and on the horizontal axis we get time like this. And then, since we have an acceleration, and we assume linear acceleration, our graph should look something like this, because we start at zero omega when time equals zero, and we reach a final omega when the right amount of time has elapsed, when, of course, the dumbbell has made one complete revolution. So that means that we will then have reached our final omega. And that's the question, what is the final omega? Now, what is known? Well, first of all, we need to find the acceleration because the, the slope of this graph is the acceleration, and we know that we can use the rotational equivalent of F equals MA, which means we can use torque equals I alpha. That means that uh, alpha, alpha, the angular acceleration, is equal to the torque divided by the moment of inertia. The torque applied is 0.0098 newton meters. And from the previous video, we found that the, the moment of inertia was 0.098 kilograms meter squared, which gives us an angular acceleration of 0.1 radians per second squared. And in the omega versus time graph, the slope is equal to the angular acceleration. So we can say that the slope of this graph, the slope is equal to alpha is equal to 0.1 radians per second square. And in omega versus time graph, the area, the area here is equal to theta, which is equal to 2 pi, because we're told that we want to find the final omega after one revolution or 2 pi radians of motion, of angular displacement. So, first of all, let's write down the definition of the slope. The slope, by definition, is equal to the rise, the rise over the run, that should be an S, the rise over the run, which in this case is the omega final divided by the run, which is T. So it's in essence, omega final, that would be the, uh, the height, and that would be the width of the, or the area, or the base of the triangle. So notice that we have the height here, and we have the base of the triangle. So by definition, we can say that the slope, and I'm missing an E here, the slope is equal to the rise of the run, which is omega final over time, or the height over the base of the triangle. We can also say that the area, and by the way, of course, that's equal to 0 0.1. We can also say that the area of the triangle, which is equal to 2 pi radians, is 1 half the base times the height. So here we have 2 pi is 1 half base times height, and we have a relationship between height and base. So what we could do is we could say that the base, which, which represents the time of course, the base is, uh, or the height, is equal to 0 0.1 times the base, which means that 2 pi is equal to 1 half the base times the height, which is 0 0.1 times the base which means that if I multiply this by 2, that's 4 pi, and divide by 0.1, I get 4 pi divided by 0 0.1 is equal to the base squared, or the base squared is equal to 40 pi. So now if I try to find the base, I can say that the base is equal to the square root of 40 pi, and of course the base represents the time. So let's do that. So we have 40 times pi, Take the square root of that, that gives me 11.2. It's over here. So it gives me 11.2, and of course, that is equal to the time, so we can say it's 11.2 seconds, standard units. All right, now I can go back to the height. Remember, the height, which is equal to omega final, is equal to 0 0.1 times the base, or 0 0.1 times the time. 
And since the time is 11.2, then the height, which is the omega final, which is equal to 0.1 times 11.2 or 1.12, and that would be radians per second for the final, oop, there we go, for the final omega. So you can see that graphically, we can find the solution just as well by using the concept that the slope in an omega versus time graph is simply going to be equal to uh, alpha, the angle of acceleration, and the area can be found by saying that the area, which is a known quantity, is equal to one half the base times the height in the triangle. Solving those two equations simultaneously, the area and the slope, we can solve for B and H, B representing the time, and H representing omega final. And that is how it's done.